In this video, we will show how to make this animation particle tornado effect in geometry nodes. So let's add a new mesh, which we'll just use a plane, create a new geometry node setup, and we're going to add a curve line. We want to control the endpoint of this curve line, so you know, right here, so we can control the size of it. And I'm going to resample the curve, which basically means that instead of one point here, it will be 10 in this instance. And then I want to manipulate this more, so I use a capture attribute node and a spline parameter node. To capture the factor or rather plug the spline factor into the capture attribute we're gonna keep going by doing a set curve well do curve to mesh and do a set curve radius to profile the curve with a curve radius or sorry rather circle curve circle is what I meant plug that into the profile and then distribute points on faces let's do a points uh, point radius is actually what I'm looking for set point radius so we now have these somewhat distributed and i know that i want to control these parts so we're going to turn down the resolution and let's increase this to 10,000 i'm going to save here and let's do a random value, plug this into this point radius because these points are too big. And now they're like this. And I think I also adjust this a bit. You can see what these do. So let's do a set position node. And I'm going to also want a join geometry node because I'm going to add two layers to this. Finally, we're going to just add a realize instance and then a set material eventually. We need to build this out more. And to do that, to shape the actual shape of the curves, I'm going to use this capture attribute plug this into a float value and this needs to be plugged into here that radius and you can now see we have shapes you can truly adjust these shapes to how you want but this is sort of a tornado effect um and i also like i said before want to duplicate these Oosh, command shift D and let's just add a bottom area to this you'll see in a second and the reason why we can't see anything right now is because I don't have this plugged into joint geometry. Oh, I plugged it into the wrong one. This ge join geometry. And you can now see we have that at the bottom. And I don't want this random value in here. And I just want to make the points a lot smaller. And finally, adjust this radius a little bit. Let's do like 
you can mess with these curve values. And now let's add a little more complexity to this. So I want my first animation. Actually, let me, in terms of organization, I'm gonna shift P, drag this here, let's go to scene time, go to seconds, and we want a mathematical function to control the speed of this animation. So I actually want this plugged into this divide. So I'll turn it to five because I want the speed to be that value and you'll see in a second. So I'm gonna duplicate here, duplicate here and do a addition, do a multiplication. And I actually wanna capture this attribute that we have here and plug this into the addition because I wanna add this time value effect to the position and I want to add a vector rotate because I want to rotate and then I need one more to get these points back I need to use the position node in the vector and now you can see we have rotation let's turn up this multiply oh, by 10 and now we have that now we're going to keep going along here. So I want to plug this vector rotate into uh, this set position node. So, cause I have it right here. So I drag this vector rotate and I plug it into the position. So now we both have both of these moving and it doesn't look as interesting as the example still. So. What we need to do is do a noise actually i want one more set position node plugged in here i forgot to mention that and i also now want to do this i want to plug this noise into here but you can now see that it's messed up it's not it's now offset and in order to change that offset, you need to use vector math. And we're just gonna subtract a 0.5, bring it back to the center, and then duplicate this, plug it into this noodle. And then we're gonna turn this to scale. And I wanna control this scale here because it controls it like this. It makes it like really abstract, but then it brings it back in. So let's now also plug this into this offset because like I said, there's two layers here. And there's a few more steps here. I wanna make it like more, and by the way, control the end point here. I'm gonna just turn this up and just do a value of E. And you can now see it's a lot taller. Let's finish up these nodes by doing a, let's duplicate this. Actually, let's duplicate the connection. No, sorry. Let's just duplicate it and then take this seconds from this node and plug it into here. And I want this to be a multiply node and I'm gonna do E, or excuse me, I divided by two and then I'm going to use another noise. I'm going to use a, and by the way, I'm plugging this into this offset. You can see this is way too intense right now. So I'm gonna actually pause it and then show. So we're gonna also do a subtract again. We're going to do a scale node again. And then I only want this to affect the offset of the X and the Y coordinates. And you can now see it's still a little, you know, it's too much. Um, but that's because maybe we just want it to be less noticeable by 
adjusting this scale. Um, let's actually see here real quick. Yeah, okay. If you keep it low, it's subtle, but it's moving a little more. So like without it, it's just completely stationary, but a real tornado would move sort of unpredictably on the X and Y axes. So now it still is not how I had it in the example because we need to adjust the, well, first the noise value. Maybe let's adjust the scale a little bit. You can just see how it's controlled like that. Um, let me try to resolve why it's not exact. I believe that's because this actually, I think this has part to do with it. So I want to control the noise and I want it to actually be uh, plugged in here. So we have a seed value. And maybe this is the, so this is the speed. This is the scale. And I think that, let me double check these nodes to just make sure. Cause you can see that it's not quite the same yet. That's because That is because this, oh, let me turn these off. It's plugged into here. This is plugged in correct. Um, well, this is working and Oh, maybe make it a little more noticeable by doing 0 0.007. Oh no, I liked it where it was. Uh, I believe this is because of the scale or no, it's, I think it's because of the scale of the vector. No, see, that's this vector that controls that. Um, it's because this is plugged into here. Hmm. That factor is plugged in. I'm going to have to tinker with this a little more. Maybe it's because, yeah, you can do stuff like this, right? So you have the end and you have this. So it looks cool, but I don't know why my example is spread out more, but you kind of see the point. You need to really just copy these values and um, yeah, just let me, let me just take this geometry nodes one here and see if that works. Ooh, no. It's because of the values that I have plugged in on this one. So I have two, three, so two pi, and then, yeah, okay. There you go. So it was the values, I think, that were kind of tripping me up there. Right, okay. So I have the scale about here. And then if you just adjust the width, let's turn up the scale a little more. And just adjust everything, adjust this. And maybe you could also change the texture to be like a brick texture, a just kind of a 3D texture. We'll do some interesting effects 
like that. I'm gonna also just mention the shading here before I go. So I need to go to geometry nodes, select the shader that I want. In this instance, I call it material one. And the material is, oh, it is this one and it is a color ramp choose two colors place them here and actually i'm you can only do this in cycles because this point info node is choosing the position and then i only want it to shade on the z axis i want this color ramp to go from white here to pink here and then pink here and so when i make this z axis I then subtract it and place it back in the middle, just like how we did with the positioning. And then I add a color ramp, and then I have a principled BSDF that has the color plugged into the emission. And finally, I have a mix shader, which I'm mixing with transparency, and then a layer weight node of with blend on it. So before I leave, I'll just bring this back to a noise texture and adjust these values okay there you go see see how that looks much more akin to my example uh sorry it took me a sec to figure that out um but yeah you want to really dial in these group inputs that i have here so let's actually oh let's make it 4d again and like I said, this is a seed value. So I have this group input plugged into there and let's also mess with the scale. And now we have m so many iterations of this. Um, it's pretty endless. I think in the other one to animate it, I animate the value of the width. So the seed value pretty much. So I go to here and then I do like hashtag frame divided by 60 or something like that and then it animates so before i go i'll just mention that to do this and i'm still working on this is you got to understand this capture attribute node because it maps this line out and then it allows you to manipulate the whole line with curves with random offsetting positioning as well as the spline parameter curve which is super important when trying to do curve like content in geometry nodes. I would also like to say that with the shader, you should try to do some different shaders, uh, maybe crazy modifiers on top of this. And then, as I mentioned before, just mess with these values, mess with the um, noise textures and even these distribution values, maybe some of these areas, etc. So, I hope you learned something and thank you for watching the video.